Hey everyone, my name is Mark, and I'm going to show you today how I grade in HDR. Now, there's a couple things you have to know right off the bat. There are some requirements for HDR. Uh, one of those is you have to have a camera that shoots in 10-bit color. So that would be like some of the newer Sony cameras, some of the newer Canon cameras. Uh, the Z-Cam cameras are all good. The Blackmagic cameras are all good. So not your low-end consumer cameras, kind of your mid and upper-end cameras. You need to be using those cameras to be able to edit in HDR. You can't use 8-bit video. Now, when I'm talking about bit depth here, that refers to the color information. So 8-bit just doesn't have enough color information to, to grade in HDR. And then also, you'll need to have some equipment like an HDR monitor to be able to grade in HDR. You can't just use an average computer screen like this iMac here or whatever average computer, computer screen you might have. You have to have an HDR monitor to grade in HDR. Now, I'm gonna grade in, in uh, DaVinci Resolve because that's the software I'm most familiar with. Um, and I'll be using a DeckLink card to get an image from my computer, from the software, onto my HDR monitor. That's kind of the third part you need is uh, at least for Blackmagic software, you need a DeckLink card to get video out of Resolve onto another screen. So I'll run over those things and uh, show you some details and then I'll get into Resolve and show you how to set it up so you can grade in HDR and upload videos to YouTube in HDR. Grading in HDR is probably easier than you thought it would be and also harder than you thought it would be. And I'll show you what I mean. When I say HDR, I'm referring to specifically Rec 2100 or BT 2020, these are numbers that just basically define a color space. What kind of colors does this video standard hold? We're all familiar with Rec 709. It's the most common color space out there. It's been uh, the standard in broadcast for years, like a couple decades. So HDR is simply another step down that road of color space. It expands that world of a uh, Rec 709 a great deal. So you have a lot more color to play with and also a greater range of latitude in luminance to work with. Now HDR is still kind of a new thing, so the technology is still evolving. The spec is there, the spec is solid, but the equipment is trying to get up to speed to meet that spec, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. I don't wanna get too crazy uh, technical on this thing. Uh, I wanna make this kind of uh, at a level where if you have some experience in grading, if you've been grading in, in Rec. 709, you can step into HDR without too much hassle. This is a DeckLink card, or rather it's a sonnet box holding a DeckLink card. Um, this one actually has two parts to it, the card does. Um, I have a whole bunch of input and output options with this particular one, and this one's pretty expensive. You don't need this one to do HDR. You just need one that says it supports HDMI 2.0a. If it's 1.4, it won't work. And there's a couple other options that are like three or $400 for in the DeckLink world here. And like I said, Resolve will only work with DeckLink cards, so Blackmagic cards, Blackmagic software. If you're in uh, Final Cut or, or Premiere Pro, you can use other brands, um, like um, the one I can't remember. But you can also use these with those software, but it just, in my opinion, it doesn't work as well. Uh, Final Cut drops the resolution down to like 720 or something when you're on playback. It's really poor uh, using this DeckLink card. But in Resolve, I get the full resolution, like 4K, or even 8K, I believe, with this box. The reason why I have a box is because my iMac doesn't support cards. I can't put cards in this thing, so uh, I need an external box like this. This one is Thunderbolt, so I use one single cable from this right into my computer, and then I just come HDMI out into my TV. And by the way, my TV here is an LG OLED. This particular model is a C755 inch. Uh, I find that this is the best option. Unless you're a professional colorist, like making a living as a colorist or an editor, you don't need a five-figure professional HDR grading monitor. Uh, this will get you like 90% there, even 95% there. The colors are great, the black levels are great. Um, it's just not perfect when it comes to the luminance. Um, there's some variability there. But otherwise, you can get a really great grade. And for everything I've done, I've been really happy with this thing. I got this one for steals, a thousand bucks uh, at B&H on clearance because they were an older model. It was brand new in the box. Right now, they run around 1500 to $2,000. But it's a lot cheaper than the next step up, which would be like an Apple... HDR, whatever that $5,000 thing they sell is, X XHR, whatever they call it. That's a better grading monitor, theoretically, but it's very expensive. And like I said, if you go above that to a professional grading monitor, you're looking at five figures, like $30,000, which is about what my car costs. So there's no way I'm gonna buy that. Now let's jump into Resolve and I'll show you the settings needed to set to get HDR in here and onto your external display. Here I am in DaVinci Resolve and in 
particular, this is version 16.2.6. It's relatively new at the time of this video comes out. You don't have to have version 16 necessarily. I did grade HDR in version 15, but I think 16 is just a little bit easier to use. Let me jump over to my timeline. You wanna make sure that your Decklink card is plugged in and connected to your computer before you start Resolve. And once it is, you can come up here to uh, Preferences. And the first thing we wanna check is here under System, Video and Audio I.O. You'll see your card show up. This is my card here. Make sure it's selected for capture and playback use. And then you can just hit Save. And then you should have a signal right away. The next thing we wanna do is go to our Project Settings. It's right here, Shift 9. There's also usually an icon down here in the corner that looks like a gear. I have my icons hidden to save space. Uh, and then come up here to Color Management. And this is important right here. I'm using the uh, default setting here, DaVinci YRGB. That's the, the recommended setting. I wouldn't change that. Timeline Color Space, Rec 2100 ST2084. This is the timeline color space that I recommend. Uh, this will give you perfect HDR for YouTube and it gives me consistent results time and again. There are other settings you could play with here, like these Rec 2020s, but um, it may not work with YouTube. I believe this is the, the one that specifically will work with YouTube. The HLG might work as well, but um, it's kind of a different mode. Uh, this is the one I found was easiest to use. And then check this box here, HDR mastering is for, and I've set this to 1000 nits. Now I've experimented with this, and what I believe this does is set a metadata flag in the video file, and that informs uh, other software and other display devices what this material was graded for. And in particular, because what YouTube will do is, if you're watching it on a standard definition display, the device that doesn't support HDR, you'll see an SDR conversion that YouTube has made of your HDR video. And I believe YouTube is looking at this number in order to appropriately tone map that SDR video from your HDR grade. YouTube does a really good job at this. Supposedly there are ways to apply a LUT with your video file that YouTube will use to make that conversion, but I haven't been successful. You have to use command line software to do it. And in my experience, it wasn't, it didn't work, period. So you can try it. Some people have been successful, I wasn't. This works well enough for me and I'm actually really happy with the standard definition conversion that YouTube does. I forgot one more thing, down here in your master settings, under video monitoring. This is the resolution that will be output to your Decklink card. Mine supports 4K, so I'm in 4K uh, at my timeline resolution. But if you don't check this box right here, enable HDR metadata over HDMI, uh, you'll have a video signal, but it won't be HDR. If you click this on, you should see your TV trigger over to, uh, to HDR. It'll say BT2020 if you um, scroll to the top left of an LG OLED and click up there, you can see kind of the specs of your input signal. Now we are ready to grade, but one more thing, I wanna go back into my preferences and over here on the user setting under color, there's this box at the top that says enable HDR scopes for ST2084 and HLG. So we wanna check that and hit save. And what that's gonna do is over here on our color page is it's gonna give us a scale that goes to 10,000. It's a logarithmic scale as opposed to the standard zero to uh, 1023. We want to see the 10,000 scale because we are grading only to 1,000. So what that means is, as you can see here, I'm only going up to this line and I'm stopping. I don't really want anything to go above that. If I do, it's not going to blow up. Your, your display will be fine. Uh, HDR supports this entire range of luminance, but you'll have inconsistent results from display to display. So for example, I have two LG OLEDs in my house this 55 inch down here in my editing room, and then a 65 inch older model upstairs. They both look great, but they handle these signals a little bit differently. So this might look okay on my monitor down here, the grading up to 10,000, but on my TV upstairs, this will look blown out. And the same for my phone. I have an iPhone 10 that supports HDR, and it looks really good by the way. So if you're using the YouTube app watching HDR, you'll see it in HDR on your phone but the phone also will look blown out if anything goes way up here, up to 10,000. It's just, it doesn't correctly map those highlights into something that looks good. So by grading to 1,000, you're guaranteed to have better looking material from display to display, and you'll still have plenty of, of luminance and color there to work with by only going to 1,000. That's still very bright compared to Rec. 709. 
I brought a couple clips in that I shot in ProRes RAW with my Zcam E2F6. I've converted these to a ProRes 4444 since Resolve does not natively edit ProRes RAW files. So let me just drop these in and I'll just give you kind of a, an example of what I do with my clips. I'm by no means a professional colorist, but I've learned a thing or two about HDR grading. It's actually not very different from grading on, in Rec. 709. You're just seeing greater color and luminance than you would in Rec. 709. Rec. 709 seems really limiting and boring compared to HDR. Once you grade in HDR, you're like, man, I don't want to grade in Rec. 709 ever again. I, I hope that in the future, display devices all move in to adopt HDR because it's just a much better color space in my opinion. So here's a shot of a creek, and I hope you can see uh, that here on my SDR display, again, this, this footage is gonna look pretty washed out compared to up on the HDR display, especially as I start grading. I have a power grade that I'm just gonna drop on here. It's got a bunch of empty nodes that I use to do stuff. And I'm gonna drop some contrast in here. It's already looking really good, just with that. Um, saturation, ProRes RAW is pretty easy to grade. Um, the way it comes into my system, it's not logarithmic, it's pretty linear. Uh, I'm not sure, that's a whole nother video there talking about recording ProRes RAW, which I, I do wanna make, um, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, you can see here that I have uh, my extents turned on, and so it shows me these peaks that, that there's, that's signal you otherwise wouldn't see if you had that turned off, so I would turn that on. And so again, I wanna try to keep this down. It's not a big deal, these are like really, really tiny bits in the water that you know, you're not gonna see well, maybe you will. It does look kind of flat there. So let me pull those down. You can do two ways. You can pull those highlights down with the highlight slider. I'm not destroying the image too bad. I think I'm going to adjust my high range so I can save some of the other bits there. Bring that down close. You don't have to be right on 10,000. You can be just a little bit over. I don't think anybody's going to notice there. And then I'll just pull down some of my uh, shadows there to get those blacks really black, which you can see better on an HDR display than you can on a standard dynamic range display, especially LCDs. LCDs are are pretty poor with black levels, whereas OLEDs are excellent with black levels. So again, I don't know if you can really tell the difference, but um, this actually doesn't look too bad over here on my SDR display, but the HDR has just better color and it's gonna have uh, better luminance as my system struggles to play the ProRes 4444. There it goes, the data rate. I'm not sure, maybe Resolve doesn't like it as much. ProRes 422 plays back much smoother on my system. So let me grab in one more clip just to show you again. I think I have one here. This is actually the one I think I used in my Yellowstone video, if you saw that. It's uh, just my, my last video. So I guess this is a good example. Again, I'm just gonna use my power grade and then make some adjustments. The difference is much better here. This is a better example. So this looks pretty flat still, whereas my image on my OLED screen has much better contrast and color already, and I haven't even done that much to it. Again, I'm gonna crank this, watch the magic here. Ooh, look at those colors. I don't think they were actually that vibrant in real life, but it looks really good on screen, so I'm just gonna go with it. I have a bit too much contrast, I can bring that down a bit. And again, I bring down my highlights here if I want. I don't have to do this, you can do whatever you want. This is just how I grade. You know, I don't wanna, tell anybody how to grade. I'm, I'm not a professional colorist by any means. I'm, I'm just a hobbyist, really. I have been grading in HDR for over a year. I, my first video was back in June of 2019. If you go back and look, it was one well, my cosplay videos are done in HDR from that time on, because it just looks better. They're just a quick grade, and I'm already pretty happy with how this looks. Um, that's the beauty of ProRes RAW. There's just, it's easy to grade. There's a lot of color there, a lot of information. It looks really good. I'll make another video separate about working with ProRes RAW in particular, so how to record it in the camera and then handling it on the post side of things. I really wish Resolve would work with ProRes RAW natively. Um, hopefully in the future they will add that support. They support like 10 other RAW formats, just not ProRes RAW for whatever reason, I'm not really sure. But there's like 15 cameras out there right now that are outputting ProRes RAW. And so it would seem silly for Blackmagic to not add that codec to their uh, Resolve software. Anyway, that's, um, that's how I grade HDR. So if you go to your output page, you need to select a codec that supports Rec 2020 and ProRes 422 does. So that's what I use. You don't really need to make any changes here. I'm just using 4K, 
timeline frame rate. It's it's all about your output right here, your color management. Whatever your timeline color space is, this is going to be embedded in your video. This is what your video is going to be, Rec 2100, ST2084 Gamma. That Those are my settings for my output. So when I output this, it's a pro, regular ProRes 422 file, so it's got a lot of good good color. This is really easy for YouTube to process, and I don't lose any you know detail or very much. YouTube has just a little bit of detail loss when it recompresses into its VP9 codec. But that color information, that color space information gets carried over, and it just looks wonderful on YouTube. Now, as I mentioned, these LG OLEDs will get you 90 or 95% there. One area in which they kind of struggle is they have automatic brightness limiting circuits. Basically, these displays can't produce uh, even 1,000 nits across the entire image. I don't know if they can do, even do 1,000 nits in a small area. Uh, they just don't have the power. Like The power supply in these things isn't big enough. The panel might not be able to handle that kind of brightness. So what they do is limit the brightness here. I'll show you just by dragging this gamma. I'm dragging it up, and you can see it keeps dimming, and that's that's the display dimming. It's not resolve. It's nothing to do with the codec. It's just if I get to a certain brightness, that's like the max brightness that this display can produce across its entire screen, and it has to start limiting the image in brightness. So I'm getting I'm I'm cranking the brightness, and it's really not getting a whole lot brighter. It's kind of shifting across the image, but the overall brightness isn't changing a whole lot. As you can see, I can come back down, and it's still see. So that's something you have to be aware of with these non-professional displays is they have an auto brightness limiter and you'll see it when it happens. I can actually see it in some of my videos when it goes from shot to shot, the overall brightness will shift uh, unnaturally. You can see like the first frame or two was bright and then it ducks down as it triggers that auto brightness limiting circuitry. So just be aware of that. It's uh, something you just have to work around on these non-professional displays. Hey, thanks for joining me in this video. If you don't follow me already, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. I'm gonna have more, a lot more content like this coming out in the future. I've got a bunch of reviews of uh, other equipment coming up. If you wanna follow me on social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, I'm known as Flannel Ninja on all those platforms as well. Although over there, I pretty much just post cosplay stuff. Uh, it's kind of how I started my channel. And so that's kind of the only use I find for those platforms. Over here on YouTube, it's a different story. I'm doing more stuff like this. It's more technical and uh, camera equipment related. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.